Hey guys, it's me, Callie. This month's theme for the Gypsy and the Witch was Snow Fairy. And I hope you'll stick around and watch how I created this really cool Snow Fairy Lantern. I was inspired by quite a few videos on YouTube as well as some Pinterest posts. I'll put all links of inspiration below. And I hope this inspires you too. And you guys join me and create your own. And don't forget to check out all the other videos for the Gypsy and the Witch this month. I'll put all the links below. Stick around. I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to need an image of a fairy. And I don't suggest you go out and catch a real fairy. They really don't like it, and it's just bad karma for you. So you could use die cuts or wherever you choose to get your images. I just Googled fairy silhouettes on Google, printed this out on regular copy paper, and I glued it to a piece of black poster board. I used some of my Aileen's Tacky Glue. You could use a glue stick if you'd like. And just like this. And then I cut it out just with a pair of scissors. You could use an X-Acto knife. And here's my image. And to clean up those edges, I just took a alcohol marker. This is a Bic Market. And I went around the edges of the fairy. And there you have it. So there's our fairy image and once you have that you're going to get your jar and wash it thoroughly and then I'll meet you back here and we'll carry on. Okay guys so here's my jar. I'm using a pickle jar. I love to upcycle and but you can use a mason jar, any jar of your choice and depending on the jar you have is going to depend on what your lid is going to be like. You could use a cloth covering cheesecloth you could leave it open um, you know there are a lot of options and honestly I'm not really sure right now what I want to do but I want to kind of get the lid out of the way for a minute and we'll concentrate on our jar so what I'm gonna do for now is just lay down a coat of gesso over it for a base if you don't have gesso you could use white acrylic paint or you could skip this step altogether um, just gonna take my lid and I have some sandpaper here and I'm just going to kind of lightly go all the way around the lid you know this just rough it up a little bit and this will help the um, gesso adhere better so again there's a lot of options there are many fairy in a jar tutorials on YouTube so check them out and see what the you know what appeals to you so now that I've done that, I have a little bit of gesso in a palette dish. I'm using this Daler and Rowney. Uh, I got this at Walmart, very cheap. So we're just going to, for now, paint the top. And I'll set this aside to dry and we'll deal with it um, in a little bit. I don't care if it's completely covered or not uh, because, again, it, we're going to be putting something over this. So just being very liberal with my gesso here and I'm only doing it on top and we're gonna set this aside to dry and just use the rest of this lay it on thick okay so that's it for now and I'm just gonna set this over here to dry and the next thing that we're gonna do is take our jar and again you obviously have it clean and dry and there's no front or back on this jar on a, on a canning jar there's often a logo and I would suggest that you put the logo to the back um, I'm going to wait to put our fairy in but she will go on the inside here um, but for right now I'm choosing to cover this jar with tissue paper 
Um, there, again, there are many tutorials out there. Some people use acrylic paint. Um, you know, do what appeals to you. But I wanted to try it with the tissue paper method. So I've kind of roughly cut my tissue to size. You don't have to do this. Um, I am going to have some overlay, obviously, um, down at the bottom here. But I'm going to put some, I'm using decoupage by Americana. You could use Mod Podge. You could water down some, you know, white glue with water and use that. Um, something to adhere the tissue to the glass. And we're going to start here and I'm going to wrap it around. So let's just do that. And this can, you know, this can tear very easily. I'm not going to get too hung up on it. We're going to be adding glitter and things like that. So um, I'm just going to try to be as careful as possible, but I think it just adds to the charm. So take that, take that. Kind of just place it and then I'm going to work my way around. Try not to have too much overlap. You don't want the, you know, this to be really obscured and you can use the color tissue paper of your choice. I just thought that this blue was a little more wintry, um, but you could use white. You could use whatever you do what you want. Not worried about the bottom. I'm gonna kind of wrap it around, and even at the top, we can trim it down. I'm going to put a coat of decoupage on the outside of this as well. So I'm just going to trim this little bit of excess here. If you get any tears, you could repair them with another little piece of tissue. There we go. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to go all the way around the outside of this, including the bottom, and just kind of putting some on the bottom, not getting too crazy with it, um, and just kind of doing this, sealing it up that way. I don't care if the view is obscured on the bottom. We're not going to be dealing with that. So I'm going to finish up here and I'll meet you back here. I'm going to store this upside down like this to dry and I'll meet you back here when this is nice and dry. So this is nice and dry and there's only a couple spots that we have uh, a little bit of tear through and those we're going to easily cover up with some glitter. Uh, honestly, I can't see too many at all, so not too bad. There's our overlap in the back. Um, this morning's light is making this look green, but I assure you it's still a nice light blue. So our next step, there's two options. We could either go right to decorating the outside of the jar, and I still haven't figured out yet what I want to do with that lid, or we could do the inside of the jar. And I'm going to choose to do the inside of the jar right now, and I'll show you what we're going to use. Um, I have some cotton balls here for snow. We have our fairy, of course, and I'm choosing to use some of these snowflakes. Um, I got these online. They're just die cut kind of plasticky snowflakes, but the lighter ones, as I was trying to, you know, trying them out inside the jar, I found that the darker the better, just like the silhouette. So I took my DecoArt Media Mister in carbon black and I just sprayed over one of these lighter uh, snowflakes and made them black. So we have those and I'm just going to use my 
Aileen's clear gel, you can use hot glue, you could use whatever you'd like. So we're going to put the snow in the bottom of the jar first and I'm going to just squirt this in here. I'm not worried about where my glue is landing. I also have some chopsticks here that are going to help me um, place stuff around the edges of the jar. Now, I've already pulled apart some cotton balls, and I just literally took some cotton and pulled it apart like this, okay? So, this is our snow, and I'm just shoving it in the jar. We can't expect our fairy to live without snow. So, that's that. And really, when you see the light behind this, <clears throat> you'll see, excuse me, uh, how cool that effect is. So next we're going to adhere our fairy to the jar, and I'm going to keep this seam to the back and put her kind of like this, but on the inside, obviously. And I'm going to do the same thing with the snowflakes on the inside of the jar, and just kind of randomly glue them around. Um, I'll show you the fairy and then I'll come back when the rest is done. So I'm just going to put the glue right on her. And then I'm going to go in and just place her in she wants to go. I'll kind of push her foot down in the snow a little bit there. Um, there you can kind of get the gist of that, but I'm going to hold this, you know, each time I glue it in, I'm going to hold it until it sets a little bit. And like I said, I'll use these chopsticks to kind of help me adhere it until it dries. Alright, so that's the gist, and I'll be back when I have all this uh, glued down. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we have it. And I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I did use a different snowflake. I used one of the dark blue ones that I hadn't painted. And it doesn't seem to make much difference in the shadowing. Uh, just for some difference in design. They did give me a little bit of a problem just because it's plastic and they were a little bit stiff. I think I would have had uh, better luck if they were cardstock. But I persevered and I just kind of weighted them down and pressed them down in between each one and I was successful. So here you have it. Now I'm going to set this aside for a minute. We are going to glitter the outside of the jar but in the meantime I want to take care of this lid. And <laughs> right now we just have it gessoed and I want to be able to have it so it's accessible because we're going to attach the battery pack to our lights here so it's not like I'm going to glue up the top of the lid and I can put a whole bunch of embellishments here I need to be able to lift it on and off to turn the lights on so I thought for right now I actually had a couple ideas I thought to just paint it which I may well do and glitter it and maybe add a snowflake embellishment on top or I also thought to use um, I have this doily here that I got at uh, auction or something to maybe um, put that on top and you know but again it's going to make it so it's going to be hard to access the jar and it's really not my style it's a little too I don't know maybe if it were smaller I don't know and then I thought maybe coffee filter I, I'm still not sure about the lid, so we'll see where that winds up. But for right now, let's just get moving with something else so it looks different and maybe that'll inspire me. Uh, I'm going to put on a glove and I just want to add some color to it. So I thought I would use some of my uh, Adirondack alcohol ink. And this one's in Stream. 
and I just have a little makeup sponge here and I just want to change up the color like I said and maybe this will inspire me somehow because right now I don't know so we'll just make it pretty pretty blue and maybe that's all it needs is just a little dash of color a uh, little bit of glitter and maybe one of those snowflakes on top what do you think let's get ambitious here so I'm just gonna do this and we'll set it aside and then and this will dry really quick uh, I will come back with I'm gonna use a pie plate a clear pie plate to hold glitter and our glitter and some glue and a spoon and we will get moving on embellishing the outside of our jar and then this will be dry and I'll know what to do with it so I like um, the randomness of the color almost looks like clouds a little bit what do you think again this is coming up green you guys the color is blue um, I will add good picks at the end and stuff. So odd. I have to adjust my preferences and, I don't know, maybe it's just the lighting. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that. We'll set it aside. I'll see you back here with some glitter. Okay, I'm back with the lid. Before I move on to the glitter, I've decided I am going to use the doily. And what I did, I folded it and folded it again and folded it one more time and then I just took my scissor and cut and this is the excess that I have here to make it smaller I didn't like how much it was overhanging and I figured we'll put it over top of this and I'm going to glue it down I'll probably use some clothespins to glue it and I'll show you when I do that um, and then, I don't know, maybe a ribbon around the top or something. But, I don't like the stark white. Now, maybe you do. That's up to you. I've decided to dye the doily with the same alcohol ink and makeup sponge that I used for the lid. So, I'm going to randomly, I've already tested this and it does take the ink, um, because it looks like a synthetic blend, but I'm just going to kind of randomly go around here, only on one side. I like that it's not perfect looking, and, well, I don't know what I like. I haven't seen this yet, but that's kind of the look I'm going for is just randomness. And maybe, again, on the top, maybe we'll embellish with one of those snowflakes. We'll see. I never know when to stop. Alright. So, I just wanted to do this. You know what? Maybe I will do the other side. Hey, you know, you can always change your mind when you do art. Why not? And we'll set this aside while we're doing the glitter. Let it dry. And I think to uh, glue it to the top, I'm just going to use that Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I'll put some clothespins around the edges to get it around that edge. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okie dokie. I think I'm happy with that. What do you think? I can't believe how green that looks. I assure you, it's blue. I think it just adds a nicer dimension, you know? And like I said, we'll do it like that. So you could really see that cool flower there. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we should leave it there. And around this edge, that's all I'm going to do is just glue and hold it up like this. And I'll take some clothespins around the inner edge to let that dry. Okay? So I'm going to do that. And I'll show you how it looks with the clothespins. And then we will move on to the glitter. 
seen that. Okay, so let me just show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to go all the way around. And I'll even do some at the top just for good measure. And I'm going to kind of of course, I took my gloves off. That's fine. Wouldn't be a project without messy fingers. All right, so I'm just going to lay that down there easily. And like I said, bring this up. Kind of gather it around. And I have some clothespins here. Of course, they're purple. And this is just to help it dry to the edge. And I probably will finish it up with a tie or a ribbon around the edge. Um, I could be much neater with this and pleat it, but I'm not. You could do this with hot glue. Don't burn your fingers. Okay, and again, I'm not worried about it being too perfect. I want the kind of jagged, ragged edge. Alright, so there we go. Looks pretty cool. I made a table. Look at that. It's a new project. Stonehenge. Uh, yeah, let me uh, set those aside. Now I'm going to come back with some glitter. Okay, let's put some glitter on. I have a pie plate here just to catch it. You could use a box. Here's our jar. And I'm basically going to just kind of make it look like it's dripping down from the top and up from the bottom. I don't want to obscure anything, any of the silhouette images going on. I have three different kinds of glitter, some diamond dust, I have some glow-in-the-dark glitter, and I have some just random kind of holographic. I may use all. I may use just one. I'm not sure. I'm going to start with the bigger one. This is the Diamond Dust, and I've watered down some of my decoupage, so I just have that in a palette dish with a brush, and I'm going to put our jar like this, and I'm just going to kind of show you, and then I'll do the rest off camera, so no precision here kind of make want to make it look a little drippy and I actually have a spoon here too kind of help me out all right and that's it guys I'm just gonna frost it okay like I said without trying to obscure too much and I'll be back when we're all glittered up Okay, so I'm done frosting the jar, and it still needs to dry, but I used predominantly the large twinkle dust, and I did use a little bit of the holographic glitter. I did not use any of the glow-in-the-dark glitter. Um, I just think it would have been overkill. So we're going to set this aside to dry for a little bit more, and in the meantime, let's go back to the lid, and I apologize, I jumped a little bit ahead. I took off the clothespins. And actually, I jumped a lot ahead. I took off the clothespins from the doily, and that worked out great. And I just took a little bit of this blue satin ribbon that I have and wrapped it around the edge of the jar. And I used, again, my Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. And that's actually still drying a little bit now. And for the top, I was going to leave it plain, but I thought, eh, what the heck. And I went back to the snowflake. This is one of the navy blue ones, and I had these little flat back crystals. So again, using the glue, I just adhered those to the top, and that's going to be it as far as decorations go, and you can do whatever you want. 
So now we're going to focus on the inside of the jar. And I'm going to use this to attach the battery pack for our lights. Now, I have two different types of lights here. I have these um, little LED candle lights, which emit kind of a yellow glow. And I may use one of these in the bottom center of the jar uh, just to add to it, but I'm not sure. So I have that. And then I showed you before, I ordered these uh, two sets of these 15 micro LED string lights. And they look like this out of the package. And before you use them, they have these little clear plastic, I don't even know if you could see that, uh, discs that are covering the battery. You have to remove that. Okay, and these turn on, and they're all these little, you know, they're really great. So right now these are all tied up, obviously, and I want to keep it that way uh, until we're ready to put them in our jar. But I want to attach this battery pack, which obviously is replaceable batteries in it, right to the lid and all I'm going to do is use some handy dandy duct tape so I have a roll of silver duct tape and I'm just I've already cut out a couple strips here and I'm not going to you know adhere it too much but I don't want it to fall down while we're using it and you know duct tape this stuff is really good so one strip will be enough here and it's light enough and I can still access the cord there, the little switch. Alright, so I'm going to let the jar dry, the lid dry, and we'll come back and we're going to be done, you guys. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to hang any further embellishments off the jar or not. We'll see when I get it back here. See you in a minute. Okay, so everything's nice and dry and there's really nothing left to do except assemble this. Um, I am going to use both this little LED light as well as our string of lights here. Um, the last thing I want to do before I put the lid on, I've decided to use some of these ribbon. I just have random ribbon here that I thought were kind of snowy and icy, so silvers and blues. Um, I also have the cut off portion of the doily left over so I may incorporate that and I thought I would just kind of I'm not sure yet but I'm going to wrap it around the top somehow while leaving room for our lid to go on and I may uh, if it's not too big incorporate this key now this was a brass skeleton key that I had gotten at an auction I've had it around I'm wishing it were smaller it's kind of large for the jar, um, but I may be able to make it work. So I may hang this off the side too. And you know, you can embellish this however you want. I debated on adding beads, but I decided not to. So we're gonna stick with the ribbon, the key, and the lid, and that'll be more than enough. And I'll see you back here uh, when it's all assembled, and then I'll give you some shots in the dark as well. Okay, so I finished embellishing. I'll show you what I just decided to do. Just took some of the ribbon, twisted it around each other, and did a simple knot around the edge here. I did at first tie this key on. And again, you guys, it's just too big for my taste. Um, if I had a smaller one, I might go for it, but I'm gonna leave it off. So put, leave it on if you want. I'm going to assemble this back on and wow the lighting is so poor I will take some shots of this in the dark and then some good pictures close up so I'll be back and one last thing I forgot to mention I will be using my Americana acrylic sealer in matte I have a glossy one as well but I prefer the matte finish so I'll spray that and let it dry. And also, just because I forgot to mention it, when I showed you the key, I told you that it was a bronze key. Well, I turned it silver with my DecoArt Metallic Luster. So even though I didn't use it, I wanted to show you what I used because I mentioned it. So I'll see you back in the dark. And here she is, you guys. Doesn't that look magical? I love the way it turned out. 
I hope you guys were inspired by this video. I'll link some videos below that inspired me. Let me know if you decide to do something like this. Don't forget to go check out my gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie, as well as our link to our Facebook group below, The Gypsy and the Witch, where we encourage you guys to join us each month. And I'll talk to you guys really soon. Peace and love.